story got a better citizen of no living on the island and dozens of haitians are reported to have died over the weekend most of the people still trying to bring down the dictator jean claude devalue the value is still in power a b c s peter collins is there well he's self declared president for life jean claude devalue emerged from his palace today for only the second time since violent demonstrations against him began and toured an industrial area Apparently, he was feeling confident. In an interview with ABC News, he declared he would not leave power, come what may. I will stay here, he said. But in the countryside, the rebellion continued. In the market town of Leogan, 30 miles southwest of the capital, a man showed how he had been shot by members of the Tonton Makut, President Duvalier's private army. If the president does not leave the palace, we will make war until he does. In a nearby village, people showed bloodstains on the ground, bullet holes in walls, and a bloody scarf as mute evidence of what they said was a massacre Friday by the Tonton Makut in which 13 people were killed. Civilian casualties are mounting around the country. In the hospital at St. Mark, about 60 miles northwest of the capital, these victims showed us their wounds and said they too had been shot by the Tonton Makut. Unofficial but conservative estimates place the number killed so far at more than 50. The president did not give any casualty figures, but he said now that he knew what the country's troubles were, he would take certain unspecified measures to solve them. He said he would not hold elections. But in a country where three quarters of the people live on less than $150 a year, the level of desperation is high. These demonstrators in St. Mark said they would keep up the pressure and would continue to display the American flag in the hope that the United States would help them. Peter Collins, ABC News, St. Mark, Haiti. Still overseas, there was a very emotional... Easy calm seems to have settled over the capital of Haiti after several days of violent protests against President for Life Jean-Paul Duvalier. Loudspeakers announced things are under control. To prove that, Duvalier and his wife toured the capital under heavy guard. But most of the city remains deserted under the state of siege. In the midst of Haiti's turmoil, there is one man fighting against what seems to be impossible odds. His lone mission is to help save some of Haiti's children from poverty, hunger, and illiteracy. Barry Cunningham reports. He is a Dutch missionary in a Haitian slum called Brooklyn. Every day, Father Lawrence Bonin tends to his flock of 15,000 children, many of them naked, bellies distended with hunger and disease, frolicking in the stench of an open sewer. Father Bonin has been here for 31 years. He hasn't seen many of his flock live that long. On average, one in 10 infants die at birth. Adults die before their 45th birthday. Until the Duvalier regime clamped martial law on this island nation, Father Bonin had managed to feed 15,000 slum children a day. The meager portion of rice and beans was the closest thing Haiti has to a school lunch program. But Father Bonin's school is closed now. The daily food lines have stopped. Father Bonin says he's afraid of trouble, frightened by the state of siege in Haiti. He says his Haitian driver has been arrested and beaten. Uh, one of uh, the Tonto Makute, uh, he uh, tried to kill one of my employees yesterday also, yeah. but he did not succeed. Backed by Belgian and U.S. voluntary aid contributions, Father Bonin knows he must feed the children because their parents cannot. This 19-year-old mother with two children says a chunk of cabbage is all they will eat this day, and they are ill, always ill. Father Bonin says there are two kinds of tears here. When you visit this slum area, you should have no crocodile tears, but tears of rage, feeling unable to do something to solve this problem. So long as the dictator they call Baby Doc remains in control, the missionaries here say poverty will remain a tool of political oppression. These people see very little of the $56 million in U.S. aid pouring into the Duvalier Palace each year. Money, they say, goes to Duvalier's villa in Spain, his wife's million-dollar shopping sprees in Paris. The best that Father Bowen and other social workers can hope for now is that Haiti's incredible filth, disease, and hunger will reawaken the conscience of the Western Hemisphere the way the Ethiopian famine did last year. For Haiti, they say, is nothing more than another Ethiopia in our own backyard. For the Independent News, Barry Cunningham, Haiti. Amidst the...
Royer's request for shelter or asylum. In Haiti, Jerry Bowen reports that troops are trying to force a return to normalcy, a state which may no longer be possible. The protest against President for Life, Jean-Claude Duvalier, continued in the capital of Port-au-Prince today, a large number of store owners defying government orders to open their doors for business as usual. Half of the stores are closed, and we are willing to stay closed. But the government cracked down. Army troops and blue uniform members of the president's militia, the much-feared Tonton Makut, roamed downtown streets, rounding up any shopkeepers they could find, forcing them to open their stores. The continuing protest against the government is having an impact on Haiti's foreign community. Some Americans are leaving the country, if only briefly, until the situation is resolved. I feel like the climate here, politically, is pretty unsavory. I'm not comfortable in my home right now. We feel very safe in Haiti any other time but now. And life is far from normal for the foreign factory owners, many of them Americans, attracted here by the cheap labor pool. Workers who stitch softballs, sew clothing, count the coupons American shoppers turn into U.S. supermarkets, all for as little as 60 cents an hour. Hager Slacks just took over a factory this week, shipped in a half million dollars in new equipment, and then got word a major order had been put on hold because of the unrest here. I think it just makes our, our customers nervous uh, about about their goods and the shipping schedules and so on. Haiti's strategic location is of even greater importance to the United States, representing a friendly shore along a vital shipping route to the Panama Canal, a shipping route that is flanked by Cuba as well. The strong pro-American climate of this impoverished nation is not expected to change, no matter how the current political crisis is resolved. And with each day of protest, it's very evident here that a growing number of Haitians believe the only resolution is the departure of Jean-Claude Duvalier. Jerry Bowen, CBS News.